So today is going to be a little bit different. This video is all about why I have fully decided to stop drinking alcohol. We'll talk a little bit about my my backstory or like my kind of past with alcohol, um, what the turning point really was that caused me to shift my relationship with alcohol, and then what has gotten me to the point that I am at now, which is really like me truly deciding that alcohol is just not meant to be a part of my life <laughs> at all in general. I will talk a little bit about the effects of alcohol. I'm not going to dive too crazy deep into like the health effects and things like that because I think there's a lot of information out there and honestly we all kind of know <laughs> that alcohol is not the best for our health. I'll dive into it a little bit but I really want to tap into more so the emotional and especially the energetic and spiritual effects of drinking alcohol because this is something that has really been a driving force for me not drinking anymore. A little bit about my past, my story in terms of just my relationship with alcohol. Uh, funny enough, I actually did not drink at all in high school. I didn't really party in high school. I was like, honestly, very much this like goody two shoes uh, against all of that in high school. I studied, I just focused on school and like hung out with friends, but alcohol was not a part of that. And so, yeah, I was not one of those that was drinking early. I started drinking in college. So I went off to college. I joined an acapella group, I joined a sorority, and for those of you who are from the United States who have been to a kind of stereotypical college, you know how this goes. It is just, it's part of the experience, honestly, and oftentimes alcohol is just part of what college life looks like, what university life looks like. So I started my freshman year and it was not long until I was drinking pretty regularly. You know, that was part of the social experience. It was part of what my sorority did. It was part of what my acapella group did on the weekends. And so I was drinking a lot. I've never been someone who, you know, drinks by myself. That's not ever something that was appealing to me, but I was drinking a lot socially. I was, you know, going out to bars and going to clubs and things like that and drinking. And on the nights that I drank, I drank a lot. <laughs> um, it's kind of crazy for me to even think about now because I would die if I drank the way that I used to drink. But I mean, you know, we would be taking multiple shots just to pregame to then go out to the bars or, you know, drinking a couple glasses of wine before then going out and drinking more at the bars. So yeah, I really, really was drinking a lot. And I quite regularly would black out. This is something that always was part of my experience. You know, I don't know exactly why this was specifically for me, but I would blackout to the point where I wouldn't remember anything from the night before, or I would remember up until a certain point, and then it was just gone after that. And the thing that's kind of crazy about this is my friends who would talk to me about it the next day oftentimes would actually say that I was acting pretty sober. Like I wasn't acting crazy. I was acting myself. I was speaking normally. I was acting pretty normal. And I just don't remember any of it. I mean, I have complete nights that are gone from my memory. I have a lot of experiences with friends and things like that that involve drinking that I truly just don't remember. So that was already a little bit of a warning sign pretty early for me. Um, and beyond that, very, very early compared to most people, I would say I had really intense hangovers. So just the next day was gone for me. You know, if we were out on a Saturday, then that Sunday was just shot for me. And I would often feel so sick that I would actually have to sit down on the ground. Like I would maybe be out at brunch with friends and this wave of, 
um, feeling sick and feeling like I was going to faint would come over me. And I would literally have to sit down and put my head between my hands because I felt like I was going to pass out. So really, really intense hangovers from a really early age. So obviously alcohol was like not resonating with me, um, but you know, it was part of the game and I, I kept drinking and I didn't want to make that sacrifice because it was so involved in my social life and it was such a big part of what I did with my friends. So that's a little bit of the back history. It's just, it's, it's wild when we think about how ingrained into our culture drinking really is, how normalized it is to go out and get absolutely trashed <laughs> um, to the point of making a lot of very interesting choices. And yeah, I mean, it's just part of the culture um, to the point where I actually took a class in college called Geography of Wine. And part of the extra credit was drinking and then blogging about the wine, right? So I could actually, I actually did <laughs> not have to take my final exam because I drank so much and blogged about it and did wine tastings to the point where I got enough credit that I didn't have to take my final exam. So if that does not say something to you, uh, I don't know what will. And then after college, I worked for about four years at a marketing agency, like marketing and media. And again, if any of you have worked in marketing or worked in the media world, you probably know that drinking can be a really, really big part of that experience, and it was. So again, on the weekends, even sometimes during the week, drinking just continued to be a part of my experience. I had clients that were bars and clubs, and so literally part of my job was to go to these places and you know mix and, and connect with the owners and just be there, and so I was drinking. So yes. I have a lot of nights that I don't remember. We'll just say that. Uh, I don't regret anything because I am not really somebody who, like, I don't really believe in regret. I think that everything happens for a reason to teach us things as long as we actually learn from them. <laughs> um, but yeah, I definitely did make some poor choices. I will say that. Um, and I have a lot of, of, you know, experiences that, I don't remember. So it's kind of ironic because I can't even necessarily look back and say like, oh, I just have all these amazing memories though. So it's okay because I don't remember them. <laughs> what was the turning point and when did this start to shift? When did my relationship with alcohol start to shift? Uh, I've mentioned this, I think maybe in some of my videos, but I for various reasons, more of a shit hit the fan kind of situation. <laughs> uh, when I was 26 years old, I decided to sell everything. You pick up, I quit my job and I moved to Australia. Um, my plan was to be in Australia for maybe six months and just reassess my life. But I ended up living in Australia for two years. And when I first got to Australia, I was volunteering. I was doing a work away. And I ended up at this yoga retreat and I didn't really know that much about it when I got into it, but it turned out to be a kind of half yoga retreat, half ashram. It was a Hare Krishna ashram. And so in, in being there, we weren't allowed to have any drugs or alcohol or anything like that because it was the sacred space. And to honor the ashram part of it, but also just to honor the yoga and yogic lifestyle, there was no alcohol allowed. So I, I stopped drinking and it was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. I didn't really miss it. I, I didn't miss those kinds of nights out or anything like that. Um, and my health was just like pff, incredible. I mean, not drinking, doing yoga every day, meditating every day, my health was amazing and my mental health and all these different things. And I started to really form this deep, deep connection with spirituality, with yoga, with, with myself. And, um, I just didn't miss it. I didn't, I didn't feel the need to, you know, have those nights where I would go out and drink and I felt so much better. 
And I, <laughs> I remember really distinctly, there was always, there were always people passing through from all over the world. And we had a couple monks who were passing through for this event and staying at the ashram. And this one monk, he didn't really talk to anyone. He was really quiet and kind of kept to himself. And I remember one day I just saw him making a beeline towards me, like walking super fast towards me and his eyes were on me. And I was like, oh, what is happening? What is this guy going to say? And he stopped right in front of me and he looked at me and he said, you do not need to drink alcohol. <laughs> I was like, okay, point taken. That was We'd never talked before. I didn't know this guy. And it, that's it. That's all he said. And then he left. And it was just so interesting that he felt the very strong need to tell me that. So all of these things kind of came together. And slowly, just very naturally, I started to you know, stop drinking. And then all of last year, of course, I worked at a, a plant medicine retreat, an ayahuasca retreat in Peru. And this just continued to really shift my perspective on alcohol because we talked about it when it came to the dieta for ayahuasca. And one of the things that we always talked about in terms of the post ayahuasca phase and integration is the importance of staying away from alcohol because of multiple reasons. Uh, one of them being, and I talk about this actually in some of my ayahuasca videos, but ayahuasca stays with you. This is a medicine that really continues to work with you after your ceremonies. So getting drunk can actually sever the energetic healing that you have experienced on your retreat or working with these plant medicines and kind of cut you off from the continued healing that would happen afterwards. So that was one thing that we talked about. Something else that we talked about was specifically related to hard alcohol or spirits. And there is a reason that these are actually called spirits and it's wild when you really think about it. But hard alcohol is used often as a tool by shamans, by medicine women, medicine men, or even herbalists, right? To extract the essence of the plant that they're working with. Maybe it's an herb or a plant or something like that, but the alcohol is used to extract the essence of that plant to make medicine. And in the same way, when we drink alcohol, it is extracting the essence of ourselves. And who's to say what is kind of filling that place? But in some cultures, it's believed that we really open ourselves up energetically and our protection of ourselves is kind of like um, weakened. It falls away. And so other spirits are able to come in. And yeah, there's a reason that when we get really drunk, maybe we aren't acting like ourselves or maybe we black out or we don't remember things. Whether you believe that aspect, that side of it or not, um, it is interesting to think about for sure, right? And it's really, really interesting that they're called spirits. So that stuck with me, that really resonated with me. And um, as I continue on my spiritual journey, it's just really important to me personally to keep my energy clean and pure and just to protect myself as much as possible. So that was something that really struck a chord uh, when it came to me really thinking about my relationship with alcohol moving forward. So while we are on this note of like some of the effects of alcohol, let's go ahead and just talk about this a little bit. Again, I'm not going to go too crazy into this, but I do want to touch on it. So when it comes to physical effects, the physical side effects of alcohol, of course, we all know that alcohol is, is not very good for you. And there's an amazing, amazing podcast actually by Dr. Andrew Huberman. I will link that podcast below in the description box. Rather than me going into it a ton, watch that or listen to that uh, podcast if you are interested in this because it's super, super fascinating and it really breaks down all aspects of, of alcohol and how it affects us. However, just basic, basic level, it is actually us being poisoned that leads to the effects of being drunk. So when we get drunk, we are being poisoned. This can lead to liver damage. 
It can lead to a multitude of heart-related issues, brain and neurological damage, and obviously memory issues. It can also cause an increase in cancer risk. It weakens the immune system. It dysregulates our sleep or causes us to have sleep issues. And alcohol kills bacteria, right? So part of the uh, whole thing with cleaning is using alcohol to disinfect and to kill bacteria. But the thing is, is it's not just killing the bad bacteria, alcohol also kills good bacteria. So it's really damaging to our gut. And the gut is one of the most important things when it comes to our overall health. So if we're drinking, we are killing the good bacteria that's in the gut, and that is going to affect everything else. And finally, alcohol activates the sympathetic nervous system, which is like fight or flight, and deactivates the parasympathetic nervous system, which is that calming, that rest and digest. The parasympathetic is like the state that we tap into when we meditate or when we practice breath work and some of these other practices, and it is deactivating that. So it is taking us away from the rest and digest state and putting us into that fight or flight response. So those are just some of the reasons physically that alcohol is not good for our health. When it comes to the emotional side or the emotional effects of alcohol, it can lead to increased anxiety and depression. It can impair our judgment, leading to poor choices. I can attest to that personally. Uh, it can also lead to relationship issues and it can lead to emotional instability in general, right? So mood swings, maybe aggression or violence uh, or even sadness, different things like that. And now, which this is the part to me that I just find like so fascinating, the energetic, the spiritual aspect is like, really the main reason for me. And I just find it so interesting. So let me know if you guys find this as interesting as I do. But in terms of the spiritual reasons or the energetic reasons uh, that alcohol is not maybe the best for us, alcohol weakens the aura. So our energy body, it weakens that. And it is especially um, heightened if we are empaths. So if you know that you are an empath, if you know that you are someone that is really sensitive, Alcohol is going to affect you even more in that way. So it weakens our energy body and the flow of energy within our system and the flow of energy through the energetic pathways, through the meridians, through the chakras is what keeps us healthy. So when we obstruct, when we cut off that kind of proper flow, it can lead to illness, it can lead to disease. I talk about that in my Reiki video uh, that I just posted recently. So. That is a big thing is alcohol affects the aura and the energy body. Alcohol also puts us into an unconscious state. I mean, this is like one of the biggest things when we drink is we're not really as conscious or present um, with what we are doing and what is happening around us. And the kind of heartbreaking thing is that I think that's part of what attracts people to alcohol uh, is, is some people just not really wanting to be present with their lives. Um, but it really cuts us off from our connection to everything. It cuts us off from our connection to ourselves, to something greater, to the present moment. And so um, it's, it's really a very unconscious state when we're drinking. And there is nothing more beautiful than being able to be truly present and in the moment. Alcohol also affects our pineal gland. So some of you might know of this as the third eye or even our seat of intuition, but alcohol really, yeah, disconnects us from our intuition. And alcohol also lowers our vibration. So some of you may have seen this in some other videos or online, but there's actually a, a scale of vibration. And I'll see if I can put that um, up here in the video so that you can see what that looks like, but it kind of shows these different emotions and where they resonate on a scale of, of vibration and of frequency, right? So certain emotions like joy and bliss can resonate really high. And then there's emotions like judgment and fear that might resonate really low. And then there are substances and things that kind of fit within the scale, right? And alcohol resonates really low at a, a low frequency. And so when we drink, it lowers our frequency, it lowers our vibration. 
I think that, and I would love to hear if you resonate with this, but I really think that as we raise our vibration, you know, as we go along our own spiritual path and our own spiritual journey, the desire for alcohol just sort of starts to fade away naturally. And this is something that I've noticed in my own journey. I genuinely believe that like my own energy has shifted so much that I just don't resonate with alcohol anymore. And it hits me really quickly and it just tells me, uh, my body tells me, you don't need this. It's interesting because I did my Reiki training a couple weekends ago and it almost feels like I'm even more sensitive to these energies now. And so I think even more so, <laughs> I realized that the alcohol is just not a fit. Uh, in terms of the benefits, let's talk about that for just a second. The benefits of not drinking alcohol and what I have really noticed from removing alcohol from my life. Number one is confidence. And this might sound a little backwards, but I promise this is so true that you know, we often think that we might need alcohol to feel confident. If we're out in public or we're in a social thing, alcohol might give us that little boost that we need. But I've actually found that since not drinking, yes, of course, there was like a little bit of an awkward phase at first to kind of get through like friends thinking it's weird that you don't drink or being the person that's not drinking in these kind of social settings. But I started to actually build up my confidence to just do these things sober and just truly being myself and not feeling like I need a crutch to support me in being more confident. And even if I'm out and dancing, like I love and have so much fun dancing totally sober and I don't feel the need to drink or do anything to boost my confidence in that way. And I think that that has a ripple effect in every aspect of my life. So I actually feel more confident now that I am not drinking. Health is better. My my skin, my, you know, just like overall physical health is obviously way, way better not drinking alcohol and not having these horrific hangovers and missing entire days of my life. <laughs> um, and, you know, missing out on a beautiful Sunday because I'm so hungover. Like I do not miss that at all. It is so worth it to just feel vibrant and amazing and energetic when you wake up and be able to do what you want to do that day and not feel like crap. So I very much appreciate that aspect of not drinking. Again, I kind of touched on this, but just the spiritual connection. I really feel and I really believe that I am able to connect more deeply to myself, you know, to, to God, to source, and even to my own intuition because I am not kind of obstructing that connection through alcohol. So I feel more connected to all of these different things, not having that in my life. I also feel like I attract better people and better circumstances. And when I say better, I don't mean like better people, <laughs> but better in terms of, you know, the way that we are able to connect with each other, like connecting in a really genuine and authentic way. And if you think about it, again, it all goes back to frequency, right? Like by removing alcohol and that frequency from my life, I am therefore attracting circumstances, people, things of a higher frequency as well. So I feel like it's impacted the connections that I have in my life. And then finally, I am just myself. <laughs> like I am me without anything shifting that or altering that. I'm present, I'm here all the time and I I love that. Now, you know, do I appreciate the memories, the ones I can remember <laughs> from the past? Yeah, absolutely. I did have some great times. It was fun. That was part of my life that I appreciate and um, I'm grateful for what it was. And I am also super, super grateful that this part of my life moving forward is without alcohol. I would love, love, love to hear your thoughts on this. Are you someone that drinks? Uh, do you not drink? Do you want to shift your relationship with alcohol? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you have any questions. And as always, I'm just so deeply grateful for all of you guys. Thank you so, so much for being here. And until next time, I will see you in the next video.